you and I are kind of the warm-up act for Chairman Powell's second day of testimony today. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yesterday, he went before the House of Representatives, and the markets took his comments as saying, uh, we are going to cut rates in July. Uh, did the markets get the right impression? Well, uh, they're much more expert than I am on that. I think he said the same thing yesterday that he's been saying for the last month and that we said in our last memo, which is uh, we don't have forward guidance uh, anymore in the memo. Um, we're watching very carefully what's happening in the data, and we're looking very much on uh, upside risks and downside risks. And, uh, you know, at this point, they're a little more tilted to the downside, which is why we're looking at it. Well, the market's basically priced in a 100 percent chance of a rate cut. Now, can you go against the markets? We have a lot of time left before the meeting. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll have a lot of data that comes in. Uh, CPI came in this morning, and we'll get PCE inflation. We'll get retail sales. We'll get consumer spending. And markets are smart, so if the data ends up with a different kind of outcome, the markets will, I'm sure, adjust. Well, what's your view of the economy? Uh, markets have basically priced a Fed reaction to a, a recession almost. Well, uh, I actually still feel pretty good about the economy. On the consumer side, spending is great. Uh, on the labor side, uh, the markets are still quite tight. Uh, and those are very healthy signs uh, in our economy. Uh, what the chairman mentioned yesterday and what clearly is a concern on my mind is uh, business confidence and business investment. Uh, the first quarter was fine, but the indicators we see for the second quarter are less strong. And so I've been out uh, with my contacts in our district, you know, asking questions about uh, how do you feel about uh, the climate for business investment? And I'd say that folks haven't pulled back yet. I don't see people laying folks off. I don't see people cutting back existing plans. But they're also not leaning forward in the way that you might, as strong as the numbers have shown in our economy. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, because you have a little bit different background than right. the PhD economists on the Fed. You were a business consultant at McKinsey for years. So uh, you're the guy who talks to the CEOs. Uh, what's their general feeling about the economy, and where is it going? I mean, do they think we're headed down, or are they just really unsure? Well, confidence is very fragile, and uh, most everyone I talk to says this is the longest upturn uh, in my memory, and actually it has been in, in uh, recorded U.S. economic history. Um, it's got to change at some point. And so there's that uh, concern in their mind that things are uh, close to changing. That said, when you talk to them about their own businesses, uh, with very few exceptions, their own businesses are doing quite well. And so Today is good, but they're nervous about tomorrow. Well, what are they saying about uh, demand going forward? Uh, have they seen any kind of fall off? I was with a bunch of consumer company CFOs a couple weeks ago. They couldn't have been clear that demand isn't falling at all. And, you know, I've taken that as recently as this week. I was in South Carolina uh, talking to, to business people. And they will tell me demand is still quite strong. So I don't see any issues on the consumer side of the house. Uh, manufacturing's got some challenges. And uh, if you're in the equipment parts business, for example, you might uh, have seen a little bit of a slowdown. That's what happens on the investment side. But 70 percent of the economy is consumer, and that part still seems to be quite fine. Well, in terms of uncertainty, Jay Powell kept coming back to the idea of trade. Uh, is that what the CEOs are telling you? Uh, I definitely think the CEOs would like to have the rules of the game made clear. They understand in many cases uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it. But uh, they're business people, and they want the rules made clear. And if the rules include a tariff regime or a free trade regime, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine. But when the rules are clear, they'll adjust their supply chains accordingly. Uh, they're challenged by the uncertainty. They don't know how to adjust their supply chain. And that's what they're really quite interested in, is just knowing what's going to happen. Well, then how does a rate cut fix that? that kind of lack of confidence. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a question of the cost of capital. Uh, I don't think it is. I think rate cuts, if you do decide to do one, uh, a rate cut stimulates the economy in many ways, including uh, you know, spending by consumers, including investing by businesses. It's a pretty classic uh, transmission vehicle. So uh, if you were to do one, uh, it would, and I think we've shown over the last many years that if you keep rates low, it does stimulate activity in our economy. And it does that in a broad-based way. I don't think it does it in a targeted way. And it certainly doesn't go at any particular issue like trade directly. Well, the other issue that uh, the Fed's been concerned about that may lead to a rate cut is inflation or mm -hmm. lack thereof. Uh, from the company standpoint, what are people telling you about pricing uh, and pricing power? Uh, pricing's tough. Uh, and of course, um, uh, when you're in a business, you know, your pricing strategy is determined uh, in part by how vibrant the market is, but in large part by the reactions of your customers and the reactions of your competitors. And uh, uh, and the businesses I talk to are having a very hard time 
uh, passing on price. And in fact, uh, I think we have grounded expectations so well over the years, and procurement departments have uh, enhanced their capabilities so significantly over the years that I think the notion that there's any sort of wage-driven big increases in price coming, I, I think, is a very, uh, a very big, a very low likelihood bet. Well, is that a permanent change in inflation dynamics then? I think we have made a permanent change in inflation uh, dynamics. If you go back to the 70s and uh, the world that I grew up in, uh, you had uh, labor share of content was much bigger. Labor unions were much stronger. Um, uh, you didn't have the transparency that's been created by the Internet. You didn't have the uh, power of uh, big box retailers. You didn't have procurement departments that operated with very sophisticated people. And so I think that does make it very hard to just uh, take incoming costs and pass them on. And so the businesses I talk to are thinking about different ways to uh, create margins. Uh, you'll see add-on fees. You'll see um, fewer threads uh, in a sweater. Uh, you'll see the introduction of new products at a premium price. All those things are done by businesses to try to capture price in a world where the direct pricing vehicle doesn't work the way it used to. If you cut rates, it would probably have an effect on the value of the dollar. And I know that the Fed doesn't target the dollar, but what about companies? Do they want to see, as the president suggests, a weaker dollar to become more competitive? Do they need that? I think it totally depends on where you sit. Folks with more uh, international exposure have one perspective. Folks with less international exposure have a different one. What are they telling you about uh, how they're coping with tariffs these days, those who are affected by it? Well, um, you know, in the press, there's a lot of talk about tariffs. In, in truth, there aren't that many tariffs actually in the economy a as a percentage, as a size of the uh, economy. Um, and uh, the folks who have been in tariffed industries, uh, first of all, have to decide whether it's temporary or permanent, right, whether it's industry-wide or just hitting them. If it is, if they think it is temporary, uh, they're more likely to just sort of wait and see. If they think it's going to be there for a while, as many people now think is going to be the case in places like China, then they're, they're forcing the question of what to do with their supply chain. Um, if, if a tariff is industry-wide, if everyone manufactures in a given country, uh, then you actually often go to your customers and see if you can't raise price. But if it's... Uh, uh, if, if your supply chain is in China and somebody else's is in Vietnam, you know you've got to move. We're talking on uh, Bloomberg Television and Radio Worldwide with Tom Barkin, the president of the Richmond Fed. Your district represents a lot of the manufacturing that moved out of, uh, uh, of the South, moved to China, went to other places. How are trade wars playing there uh, among the businesses? The administration portrays it as short-term pain for long-term gain. Are people willing to sign up for that? Um, so you've got folks who are directly affected and folks who aren't. Uh, if you're not directly affected, uh, I think people understand the idea of uh, delivering fairer trade packages and are willing to take a little bit of uncertainty for that end, but they would like the uncertainty to be through. The folks who are directly affected, they react very much based on what's happening in their particular uh, business. And if it hits you directly, you're not happy. And if it helps you directly, you are happy. What do they tell you about uh, being able to find labor? There's been an ongoing yeah. story of we can't find, there's, there's people out there, but they're not well trained for the jobs that we have. Or in some industries, we can't find the people we need. Mm -hmm. I, I do think the labor market's tight. And for sure, it's the number one thing you hear when you talk to any uh, business in our district, and I presume uh, across the country. Uh, I would say there's a difference between uh, entry level and uh, more senior uh, leaders. At the entry level, it's really super tight. Um, and you are seeing a difficulty finding people, whether that be construction workers, truck drivers, nurses, wait staff, um, you know, in a restaurant. And uh, you are seeing uh, wages increase quite significantly in that population. I'd say in the higher end worker, while it's also tight, a lot of the investments that businesses have made over the last 10 or 15 years in worker experience have led to turnover that hasn't quite been as high as you might have expected given the strength of the economy. And people are willing, frankly, to wait a month or two or three to find the right uh, person in marketing or finance or someplace uh, like that. So where you really feel the tightness is at the entry level and in particular in places like construction. Well, do you think then uh, a rate cut helps because even if demand increases, companies might not be able to fill it? Uh, one of the things we're watching very closely is the question of 
are there still people on the sidelines who, in a strong economy, will come in? And the chairman talked a little bit uh, about that yesterday. I was in Orangeburg, uh, South Carolina, the last couple days, a small town in, in my district, trying to understand what would it take to bring more workers in off the sidelines. And I think a little bit of the answer to your question comes into how many more people are there on the sidelines who could still come in? Where do they find them? Uh, are people taking more than one job? Uh, are are, are they uh, cutting back on production because they can't uh, meet demand because they don't have the people? It depends on the industry. Again, if, if you're in a production job where you really need the people, I think people are paying up to get those people. Where they're not paying up to get those people is in the jobs where you can, you know, hold it together for a month or two or three. They're delaying that sort of thing. But in the manufacturing facilities that I've talked to, people are hiring who they can hire. Construction's a little different. There's skilled labor in there. You can't, you know, create somebody overnight. Uh, and I do talk to construction folks who are increasing their pipeline, their backlog, instead of doubling down on today. Now, that's probably good for them in the longer term, but it limits the growth somewhat today. Well, if we're coming up against the limits of uh, the labor force, then uh, the only other way to get potential growth up is increasing productivity. But we don't seem to be seeing that really happen. Uh, are companies not investing? Do they think that there's not enough gain to be had yet? The numbers actually are more positive on productivity than you just said, uh, and the first quarter number was extremely strong. So if you look on a one-year or a two-year basis, you'll see productivity in the upper ones or even low twos, which is relatively strong on a historic basis. Whether that lasts or not, you know, we'll see. I think it's too early to declare a victory on it. Um, I, I'm quite interested in productivity because I do think growth matters for our economy, and if the workforce is limited, we're going to have to do it through productivity. Uh, and I do think this issue of the climate for business investment and business confidence is a critical piece of this uh, message. If what, if what we can do as policymakers in all parts of the government to create stability and to create a sense of confidence so that businesses can invest, so that we can innovate and get more productive, I think that's actually a critical for us. Well, are CEOs saying that's what they want to do, or are they able to manage where they are? We haven't seen capacity constraints yet. Uh, Again, I think if I come back to the CEO mindset, uh, they do very much uh, want to invest and build their businesses. Uh, but they've also been through the Great Recession. They're a little bit scarred. And so they know that uh, you don't want to be caught leaning too far forward if things are going to go south. So they're very interested in following closely what's happening. And I've talked to a lot of folks this year who said, you know, for this year what I'm doing is I'm going to manage my customer mix. I'm going to trade out some of the lower profit customers for some of the higher profit customers. And I'll do that instead of expanding in the next facility. That doesn't mean that's what they're going to do next year. That's just where they are today. A couple of questions about the mechanics and the markets uh, uh, around the Fed. Um, the balance sheet rundown uh, is expected to go through September, at least on the timetable you've set. And that slowly, gradually tightens policy a little bit. So if you did cut rates, they'd be working at cross purposes. Would you change the schedule for balance sheet uh, wind down? Well, if we decide to do something with rates, I'm sure we'll have that uh, conversation. Uh, I'm, I'm of the school that thinks that uh, what we've been doing so far on the balance sheet hasn't had a meaningful impact on the economy, the original paint dry scenario that was talked about two or three years ago. Um, but uh, if we do decide to do something with rates, of course, we'll have that conversation. If the economy is not in bad shape, and you said you're relatively optimistic, and yet uh, the markets are suggesting um, that there's something wrong that needs to be addressed by the central bank, have we put in place, did the, did the policy pivot in January put in place a, a so-called Powell put, the idea that if the markets stamp their feet loud enough, you guys have to respond? Uh, again, you know markets a lot better than I do. Uh, I think what we're trying to do is to stay close to the data and try to figure out um, what we can do to help uh, sustain the expansion as best we can. Um, uh, when we got to January of this year, it seemed pretty clear that there were a set of uncertainties. You'll remember government shutdown. Uh, you'll remember uh, international markets uh, and some credit spreads in the, in the, in the markets that meant uh, we probably shouldn't be sending a message that we're on a, you know, an unmanaged path to ever higher rates. That's what we did based on all of that data. I think that was a sensible uh, thing to do. So I, I, I in general wouldn't think if I were in the markets that uh, 
we wake up every day just making sure we're, you're going to be happy. That doesn't feel like a, a, the right way to go. And, and I certainly spend my time focusing on our, the economic data, not the markets. And how do the CEOs see it? Uh, are they uh, following the markets closely? Uh, do they worry about uh, what kind of reaction you get on Wall Street? Or do you find more long-termism these days? Uh, I think they're much more focused on their sector. They're focused on their customers. They're focused on their clients. They're focused on their competitors. Uh, they're focused on their business. Uh, to the extent that uh, what happens in the markets affects their business, availability of credit, uh, stock price, they're, of course, quite interested in that. But uh, I think for them and maybe for me, uh, they understand that markets go up and markets go down, and they are trying to think through that cycle rather than uh, overly react to it. Now, I have to ask you this. Uh, it's on everybody's mind, the president saying not-so-nice things about Jay Powell and uh, you all on the Open Market Committee. If he tried to fire the chairman or demote the chairman, how would you react to that? Well, uh, as Jay said yesterday, we're going to uh, stay focused on our knitting. Uh, I hope and expect that's not going to happen, and uh, I hope and expect we'll do the right job for uh, the economy the same way we've been trying to do. All right, before we let you go, uh, we are, as I said, the warm-up act for uh, Chairman Powell, who will start in a few moments. Uh, maybe there's some senators watching uh, this now as they prepare their questions. What should we know that maybe we don't think about? about the Open Market Committee and its deliberations and how you're thinking about the economy? Uh, well, I hope that you know this, but it's, it's just great seriousness of purpose uh, in the preparation uh, and in the room. And uh, you've got 17 people in the room. They're all uh, thoughtful. Uh, they all bring a different perspective. Um, there's two days of just listening extremely hard to what one another does. And decisions are taken, not in the heat of the moment, but you know, after really deep and sober reflection. And we're just all trying to do our uh, best here. And we appreciate uh, to the senators here the support that they give us. Yeah. Uh, one last question. Uh, I almost forgot. If you cut rates, uh, 25 or 50, is it better to go stronger sooner? Uh, well, let's visit that when we come. I think uh, we will see in the next three weeks uh, consumer spending, we'll see retail sales, we'll see PCE, we saw CPI today. I think there's a lot of important data to come. And so let's see, let's see what the situation is when we have to make that decision.